Okay, my friends, this is going to be a ton of fun. And I need your help to spread these new discoveries. This is exp the new G2 experiment at Fermilab. And I've been showing this for a long time about light and so forth and what we did with light. And here's what they're talking about. The new G2 experiment at Fermilab says, it's not an election year, but it's time to vote. Help us win the breakthrough of the year prize from Science Magazine. Well, they're talking about our ancient past and all kinds of drugs and anything in science, and especially this G2 muon thing that they're doing. And I've been commenting on it and showing these dipole electron floods it seems I'm the only one here because that's the only thing that shows up is <laughs> my stuff. A nice experiment showing light is completely upends physics, and it does. Because the, the Bohr model doesn't work. They know this for years now, but they had no way to replace it. Well, electron flood theory replaces it. That's it right there, and I'm going to show you these particles, and then I'm going to leave it at that because this is the biggest discovery in recent history as far as physics goes. Okay, so let's vote for the biggest discovery for a very, very long time. The Bohr model of the atomic theory was totally wrong. It never was right. All particles are made of dipoles. Fermilab says the same thing. They say that there's a point particle and a fixed particle. That's the fixed particle, and that's the point particle. That can get big and small. That is the same size, never it's fixed. And there's the fixed one right there. You see it? Now that is, that's from Fermilab. That's not my, I mean, this is my work right here. But this is from Fermilab, says these particles exist. That's all they have is pictures of them. I am showing you, you know, they, they're doodles of them, basically. The point like, is this, and the fixed is this. Now, this is a photon of light. And this goes back a very long time. It's, it's dark energy. Light is dark energy while traveling from the sun to the earth. That was seven years ago I put this up. So it's time to look at this because we're showing the exact same particle CERN and Fermilab is looking for on their muon experiment. And here they are as light comes through the air. Then we made it, looks to me, accelerate. You see this? And it accelerated. The particle is there. It crashed in the Venturi right here and separated. And the black separated from the white. That's fission. That's fusion. Whether we can harvest all of this extreme energetic reaction, I'm not certain. But I think we might be able to. And this is the muon and the electron shower comes from the muon black ball and electron neutrino the white ball. Precisely what I showed you up here. As that hits the Venturi, they explode and break apart. I never thought it was possible, but it is uh, quite obvious. These are two separate particles. And that makes a huge, huge difference. And we started only with light. So we're not colliding gigantic particles and then seeing a lot of different chunks. Right now they have a particle zoo, they call it, because they're seeing all kinds of chunks. The nucleus of every atom is made only of electrons. And electrons are dipoles. Here's what an electron looks like. It has a positive and a negative side. All right? And they're just two little balls. That's a neg uh, an electron, that's an electron, and they're just back to back. They make photons. All right? This will burn into you. This will bounce off of you because it's already got two pieces. And as they go through the air, the bottom one glows and charges up. Well, in this, in this case, if it was the bottom one, you see here, it's the bottom one. Going forward this way, it charges. And then as it does, it flips. It goes back this way, and then the top one comes forward and charges up. And, and when that charges up, it rocks it and it flips, and then the bottom one comes. That's the muon wobble. Bottom, top, bottom, top. And that's how they spin through the air as they go forward. Here, they actually divided the black and white. We see it extremely clearly. There's no question whatsoever. That's a fact. <laughs> no question. So I would say that's a pretty good discovery. And it, it completely changes the atomic structure because everything is dipoles. 1,839 particles make up one proton. Not one gigantic big proton. No. Not how it works. I'd say that's a pretty big discovery. Okay, my friends, they all know the Bohr model is not correct. So they're coming up with all kinds of different ways to try to justify it. 
and they kick out. We have a new model. Okay, well, what is the new model of the Bohr model? It says all of nature springs from a handful of components, the fundamental particles. They interact with one another in only a few different ways. 1970s, which was when I was heavily involved in this. 1968, I was in the Army, Nuka, Nike Hercules missiles, and so forth. And I got out, and right away I went into physics, and, um, and then it didn't work out well because I realized everything was a dipole. So here, in 1970s, physicists developed a set of equations, and that's all they were, is little doodles. And I, have, I did them all. I did all, every one of them. Okay, I'll show you them in a minute, because I want you to be, understand. I know what I'm talking about. So they did a bunch of equations to develop. Together, the equations formed a succinct theory now known as the standard model of particle physics. Well, it's not, it doesn't work. It never did work. And I told them it didn't work back then. That's why I got out of it. Now, the standard model is missing a few puzzle pieces. I guess so. It, nothing to, it has to do with gravity. They don't understand gravity. They don't understand dark matter. They don't understand uh, the mass of the neutrinos. They don't understand literally anything about anything once you get under the top layer of the nucleus. Once you get down inside the nucleus, when they smash these p things apart, all they're digging through is a bunch of trash. So they find all these different particles, and these are all the particles they find. Th you don't need these particles. They're absolutely not. The only one you really do have is the two heavy-duty ones, which are the muon and the electron neutrino. And that's it. That's the only ones that exist. These, whoops, these two particles right here. And they make what we would always call an electron. Now, what's the story with this, though? Only the electron, glowy part, has to push. This is the explosive part. I'm going to expl explain all of this. And this is also denied because of peer review and not allowing this to be shown. And I can show what they are looking for, and, that, and I will show it. You're going to see it in so much detail, you, you can't deny it. And this is what is being, the kids are not allowed to speak of this. I've had people tell me at some of the top universities that they mentioned the things like this and they were told to just be quiet about it. Just forget about it. Don't think about that. It doesn't mean anything. The guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, you, don't, you have to go back and start to understand this. And, and believe me, here, you want to see what I understand? I understand more than anybody on this. This was a paper I wrote a bazillion years ago about electrostatic columbic forces, repulsive forces, and it's all from negative, well, it's all from the dipole nature of the particles. They push and shove. And I ended up coming up with the conclusion that everything is dipole to dipole interaction, and that the transfer of energy is light to atomic vapor. Light is atomic vapor, which means it has particle nature to it. And then I went in through all the, everything else there was to do with this. Chemistry, all the different chemistry labs, the thermal chemistry, all the light, everything. I did it all. And I did all the little doodles that they're talking about. All these equations. And they, they were nonsense. Absolute nonsense. So, it's not that I don't understand it. It's that I do understand it. They don't understand it. This is the nature of the universe we live in. Everything is made of that. And the nucleuses of everything, the protons are just like that, 1839 little particles. Not one big proton. 1839 little electrons, just like that, all glued together. And when they hit that, a certain frequency and a certain number, they lock in. And they lock in in what they call periods, in the periodic chart. So that's one, and this they would call two, but it actually has, this is one, this one's actually got four. It's got two protons and two neutrons, they would say. And then it goes up from there, and they throw in protons and neutrons, which they say are nothing more than these big balls. Like this. They say that's a proton. I say that's a proton. They say that's a neutron. I say this is a neutron if you add one more electrons. That's all. This is 1839. This is 1840. 
and that's right there. 1839 electrons and they're balled up in a ball like that and the white is always on the outside because they want to get away from each other so the black doesn't care they'll glob right together on the inside and I actually saw this happen in space the Russians did it on a, in space with charged particles in the vacuum of space in a vacuum chamber when they went in a big black hole appeared in the center <laughs> just exactly like that and the white particles surrounded it. Exactly what I'm showing. It was just like a gigantic nucleus in space inside of a vacuum. Alright, I showed you that black particle. This is what they're talking about right here. Rare particle may conflict with standard model signaling new physics. The mass, which I showed you, is enormous. It's signaling new physics. Absolutely it's signaling new physics because the old physics was not correct. Particle physics may have finally poked a hole in their understanding of the subatomic realm, which they would relish. Well, they have not been relishing it for the last seven years. The only way they can relish it was something like this. I have so shown that hole in particle physics for years and years now. Okay, this is at Fermi Lab. They're reconf reconfiguring their equipment to, to do what we did, to collide photons and they did find I don't know if they've done it recently but they did now find it says now one of the teams says it's reading conflicts with the standard model prediction the data coming from the collider detector at Fermilab a particle detector fed by the Tevaton, Tevatron collider which ran at Fermilab from 84 to 2011 after a decade of work working through this information a particle physicist at Duke University and his 397 <laughs> collaborators found that the W boson had a mass of 80,443.5 mega electron volts. Those are million electron volts. 86 times that of a proton. So these particles are so powerful that just think of the free energy we can get from them if we can get them. And we can. That's the W boson they're talking about. The measurement differs from the predicted mass by seven times the experimental uncertainty. It's, it's exactly what we need. So what does it mean? It means we can get free energy. 